Hello, grade 10 boys and girls and all the viewers who are watching me from different parts of the nation. Please accept my humble greetings. Uh, very cool and refreshing Wednesday morning with me, your regular English teacher for this whole month, Rakesh Resta. And in today's class, okay, we are going to talk about conditional sentences. Ever imagine yourself, okay, in your class, your teacher is talking to you, looking at you, staring at you for making those silly errors, okay, in your grammar. I am sure, okay, we will all have gone through that situations. And then we make some expression like, oops, I knew this, I was in a hest, I made a mistake, blah, blah, blah. So we keep on making a lot of excuses, and even at times we know that we have not understood the structures. We lie to ourselves, we lie to teachers. Uh, in, a, in a way, we just try to uh, make them feel like, okay, they have taught you well. But inside, okay, we feel this incompleteness, okay? We feel a little lost in not understanding the structures. And more than that, okay, it's obvious in almost every student at your age, okay? Even I had faced that when I was at your age. Uh, though we understand structures, okay, what we fail to do is we fail to apply them in our practice. So in today's class, we will try to understand not only the structure, but the implementation and, okay, it's some basic functions, how we can use conditional in understanding which structures, okay, regret structures, and also, okay, we will try to understand the use of advice. For this, you got to spend your time with me for the next 30 minutes and I think this is our moment together to understand conditions. Let's explore. Okay, in the beginning of grade nine, I am sure uh, your teachers must have introduced to you okay, the conditional sentences in some schools, okay, they do it in grade eight. Here, we are talking about all these advanced levels. Uh, okay, here we start with. So in our school textbooks, we have got basically four types of conditionals, type zero, okay, ending in type three. Here, I'm going to name them differently so that you understand them more. This is basic. Now, in your screen, okay, you can just see this. See, I, am I have introduced to you real conditionals. Now, what is real conditionals? See, this type zero and type one are real conditionals. Why are these real conditionals? Let us explore. Look at the sentence example there. If someone breaks a window, an alarm goes off. And why this is a zero conditional? Okay, because in the structure, you must have noticed a very significant thing, and that is the use of tense. See, you can even compare the zero conditional with the first conditional, all right? You will definitely see a distinct tense difference. First difference that I see, okay, or that we all can see here is the use of present tense. Present tense plus present tense. Now, what are these two present tense? The two present tense are actually the examples of clauses. In every conditional sentence, we uh, have clause to study. For example, here in this sentence, if someone breaks a window, the first part with if plus present tense part, okay, is called men clause. This is men clause. All right, I'm briefing you something interesting about clauses too. And this is called subordinate clause. Or they even call it dependent clause. All right, whatever the name, its function remains the same. So if you use present plus present, you're using type zero, okay? Just a brief, quick summary. If you use present and simple future, like in the example that you can see for first conditional, if I miss the bus tonight, I will take a taxi instead. See, miss is the present, will take is future, all right? At the beginning of our class today, we are first trying to understand the tense variation in using the conditionals, and later we'll try to understand okay, the conditionals with their possible uses. 
Now, if we go with the second two types, okay, they're classified as unreal. Remember, okay, this we have classified as real. Now, these two are classified as unreal. Why? You will get the answer in the meanwhile. Now, if you go to unreal conditional, explore the tense, study, observe very carefully, minutely you have to observe, very few changes. In second conditionals, if I own a car, I would drive to work. See, you're using F plus, now this time, your present tense is switched into past tense, and with that, there's a slight change. Instead of using, okay, simple future with the will structure, I would prefer to use ud plus verb one. Now that is very distinct, all right? Here, you're using will plus verb one. Here, you're using ud plus verb one. That is second conditional type two. Now once you move into the last conditionals we have, you got if, now this past changes into past perfect. And then with that, there is a little modification in the tense structure. You will have the same verb, ud, plus, but you will introduce a new verb, and that is have, and then the last verb is verb free structure. So you have the tense variation to study here. Now, why these are called real and why these are called unreal? Let us study. But before, again, in some of the books and some teachers, they might have introduced different kinds of names, okay? Like for type zero, they might have even call it like general, general conditional, or let's say like fact conditionals, all right? That, that gives you truth and facts. Type zero, okay, this is done. Now, someone even knows type 1 to be something as, okay, probable conditionals, all right? Probable conditionals, or they might even call it like a very simple term, easy for everyone to understand, cause and effect. Cause and effect conditionals. Likewise, type 2 is called improbable. From probable, this becomes improbable. And the last one is called impossible. Now, why these different kinds of names? It's because they have a very specific use. The uses are different. Now, we're going to explore them, okay, in turns. Let's see something about zero conditional. Look at the example there. If you don't, okay, water uh, flowers, they die. Now, here, you have a condition explained, and that condition is explained by the if, okay, subordinate clause. Now, main clause and subordinate clause, if you want to understand. If you remove if, they make a proper sentence. But if you add if, that if does not answer you, okay, or does not give you the proper meaning. So, I would prefer to give this main clause role, okay, to a sentence that is not using if. Which means, okay, here, now understand, why I have kept main clause here, why I have kept subordinate clause? Sometimes, their position can be exchanged, okay? Main clause can come first, subordinate clause can come first. So in that manner, if I draw one simple sentence and taking this particular example right here, let me show you, okay, how to understand main clause and how to understand subordinate clause, all right? This is the sentence we're talking about. If you don't, okay, water the plants, see? They die. Now, when I say if you don't water the plants, this part doesn't make complete sentence within itself unless I say they die, you don't understand. So this becomes actually the subordinate clause. All right, this becomes a subordinate clause. And they die is meaningful. You don't need, okay, this. That is mean, like, that is like plants die. So this becomes the main clause. Or if I reverse that sentence from they, okay, plants die if you don't water them. See, I can change the position of the clauses, but the meanings do not change. So with that skill, you come to know that if I use if, it's always subordinate, and therefore, now here, you need to understand this is not main clause, all right? This if part becomes subordinate, and the sentence without if becomes men. That's a men clause. But remember, like I've said here, 
the position can vary. Now, typically, there is one more structure of zero conditional. See the second example on your screen. Focus. If you have a headache, stop watching TV. Now here, I have said that you can use present and present. But with present, sometimes you can use simple imperative structure. Now simple, stru uh, simple imperatives like, okay, see, if you are sick, visit the doctor. Quite simple. If you don't understand what I just explained, rewind my teaching. If you are watching me, okay, you can understand everything. Now, I introduce one more concept of can. Right now, we're not going to focus on these model auxiliary verbs. Maybe, okay, if we have time, we will do that later. But my concern right now is to make you feel easy and understanding the tense variation and the positions of the men clause and the subordinate clause. Now, see the illustration of the zero conditional. I use simple present tense, present simple or imperative structure that is understood. You can make thousands of sentences now by following this structure. If you go with zero conditionals, I have already told you, we express general truth or fact, like if you hit water, it changes into ice. Why? Because that is for sure. It happens. There is no doubt. You cannot doubt on this particular thing. All right? That's what we use this. And sometimes, like I've said, we can use it for advice. The first one of the sentences I have just explained, if you are sick, visit the doctor, is a kind of an advice that you can use with this zero conditional. Now, moving with the use of if condition as and when. Now, sometimes this is, this is quite interesting, all right? Many students do not understand uh, this particular point, which I'm going to make you clear with the slide examples that I've brought for you. If substitute it with the word when. What is when and how does it make difference in understanding? See, look at there on the screen. The word if implies that a situation happens less frequently and when implies more frequently. So if I just say this, if I get angry, I will smash things in my room. Now when I see this, okay, my chances of getting angry is less because I use the word if. You can imagine I get angry once a month, twice a month, or if I compare it with week, once a week. But when I say something like, instead of if, I use when. See, when I get angry, I will smash okay, the things in my room. The use of when actually tells me that the way I get angry okay, keeps on happening frequently. Let's say every week I get angry. Or maybe uh, if I'm talking about a week, okay, I, I can get angry, okay, four days a week. That's a lot of days. So if you need to express the frequency of what you are explaining, you can simply substitute the word when for if. But that way, the syntax remains the same. Don't forget this. See the example here? If I have a day off from work, I usually go to the park. It doesn't happen so frequently, so there are very less chances of me going to the park. I, uh, and then if I put it, when I go to my favorite restaurant, the waiters greet me by my name. So it tells you that I keep on visiting this restaurant, and maybe because of my frequent visit, they're familiar with me. They even know my name, unlike other customers or other visitors. So there are specific meaning, all right, you have to get focused with. Uh, now we go to first conditional. How does the first conditional differ from the zero conditional? Though both are real conditionals or real situation, okay, explaining factors, how do they differ? See here, whereas the zero conditional talks about real present situation, the co first conditional talks about real is explained in two sentences. If the weather is nice, we will go for a walk. See. I am just trying to say like, oh, there is a chance that I may go for a walk. I may stay home too. If you don't apologize, she will never trust you again. There are chances that okay, even if you don't apologize, she will trust you back. You never know. You're just talking about the future possibilities. But with type zero, we talk about the real present situation, which is not challenged. There is no doubt on it. 
all right sometimes there's a confusion like when I say this particular sentence see if you listen to the teacher But if I say, okay, you will understand better, okay, I am giving you the chances of the future possibilities. Whatever the case, in both real situations, type 0 and type 1, okay, probable and cause and effect, what happens is the conditions that are discussed are of present, okay, but the action that will come into effect will happen in the near future. The near future might be just a minute after this. That's how we understand first conditionals. Uh, see, this is explained. Now, if clause, present simple, main clause, future simple, okay, that is explained to you. Now, what is this unless? If you're using if sentence in negative, okay, that is unless. So, unless actually is nothing but, okay, if in negative, okay, features, like, uh, instead of saying, okay, if I don't, you can just say, unless I. As simple as that. Now that is explained. We will move for a practice time, but we don't have a lot of practice time. So what I have done for you people is, here are quite a lot of sentences that are brought in. In every sentence, you can see, okay, there is one particular word or phrase, okay, that has been encircled with red color. Now, what do they mean? They mean simple. They are the answers. But in this view, what I want to focus is, just take a quick look at. Uh, in every if part that I have highlighted here, in every if part, remember, I have not used will plus var1 structure. All right? This is not done. This is not done. Do not make mistake here. I use if with simple present tense structure if that is zero and one i don't use future the future occurs okay in the subordinate part and that is what you have to notice is in these examples later after the class is over when you review this particular okay uh point of time notice what i have just instructed on this and do not make this error okay in your writings uh move further okay here's a summary quick summary in fact, I have explained to you everything, so there is no point okay, in explaining all these for you. I have just presented the slide for you on your screen so that you can revise with what I have just taught you for the few minutes. Okay, summary, continuing. Now, from this summary, I might have to teach you one thing extra because that was not discussed. See, the use of as soon as. When and if, it's discussed. As soon as, what is as soon as? Okay, the only difference in as soon as, if you replace if with as soon as. Take an example, see? If you give me money, I will buy a dress for me, right? I assume that, okay, you will probably give me money. There is a chance. But when, I do not know. It might take a long time, like maybe today, at the end of the day, or tomorrow, two days after, a week later. I have my own calculation on this. But once you replace if with as soon as, see, as soon as you give me the money, I will buy a dress for me. Okay, the time factor is understood that I uh, am assuming that you are going to give me money very quickly. Maybe right after I speak, you are going to throw me some money, and I will be going out to get a good dress for myself. That's how, okay, the concepts are, okay, understood. Unless is explained. Now, with that, the last one, one, one is as long as and providing that. Now, that is a little weird, okay, appearing word for many of us. Providing that. Some prefers to use provided that or as long as. Now, with that, the idea that the speaker is trying to communicate while using these conditionals, these words replacing if, is, okay, 
if only or only if you provide this. Like, for example, let's come back to the previous sentence. I gave it to you. If you give me the money. Now, see, what happens if I use this particular part? Provided that you give me the money, I will get a dress for me. Now, only in that condition I will buy. All right? Which means, if you don't give me the money, I'm not going to buy a dress for me. But go back to the previous sentence. If you give me money, or, okay, as soon as you give me the money, okay? If I say, if you give me the money, I will buy a dress for me, chances are still there that if you don't give me the money, I will buy. But with providing that, okay, if you don't, I will not. That's how, okay, it changes its meaning. Now, once we have understood real conditionals, it's time for us to bag ideas for unreal conditionals. How to use unreal conditionals? Let's take an example. They're used to talk about imaginary, unlikely, or impossible situation in the present and the past. How to connect present and the past? Let's see some examples. Second conditional. See, if I own a car, I would drive to work. Now, I am making a this is hypothetical, all right? Hypothetical, meaning this is imaginary, fictional, okay? I'm imagining of uh, my present right now. So at present, what I imagine is like, okay, I don't have a car, so I am making a kind of a wish, maybe. If I own a car, okay, I would drive to work. Imagining things are different in the present. Third conditional, okay, slightly different. If I had studied harder, I would have passed last week's test. Now, what is my present? Okay, my present is like I failed the test. I have failed. Perhaps, okay, I'm feeling very bad right now. See, if I had studied harder, I would have passed last week's test. Now, this can come to you as a kind of a regret. Maybe I'm regretting because I did not study hard. It was the right time for me to do, but I wasted, and because of that, right now, my present is different, and I'm feeling very disappointed. So I'm giving you this third conditional situation to connect my present with the past, and that is if I had studied harder, I would have passed last week's test. More on the unreal conditional, okay, mixed conditionals is something very unique, okay? This is not taught in school levels, but if you just want to understand, take a quick look at what does it mean. If I had finished my work, the first part actually matches with uh, third conditionals. But see, if you go to the main clause, there is a slightly different structure. I wouldn't be so stressed out today. Imagining something different in the past, having a different result in the present. Meanwhile, I will advise you people to uh, skip mixed conditional, maybe this way, we can grab the concept of the other conditionals, okay, very easily. Jumping to the slide, now imagining the present were different. See, one simple way to imagine that things in the present were different is to use wish plus past. Now, I'm coming to wish. How to understand wish? Now, every time, okay, we interact, okay, we compare our situations. And in that situations, we definitely make wish. So how to make this wish? What is this wish plus past simple structure? Now, right now, see what a beautiful wish I can make. I wish you were here. See what I've just written. I wish you were here. Or I can just uh, rephrase I wish by if only. That's here. If we can watch, I wish and if only structures. So what I'm trying to tell you there is, I wish. I wish you were here with I wish and if only. If you're using past tense, past tense here, okay? What is the meaning? The meaning is very obvious. You are trying to change the situation. You're wishing for a change in the situation. What is present, you, don't, you really don't expect that to happen. You really want that to change. So if you were here right now, I would feel, okay, more comfortable because um, I would interact with you. See, that is my wish. But you're not here. So my present is very different. Examples. I live near the beach. It's my present. 
But I wish I lived. See the past tense used with I wish. I wish I lived near the mountains. That is a wish. Or my dad is so busy that he has no time for me. That is my present. Now I want my dad's okay, company. I want him to be with me. So how do I make that wish? How can I change my present situation by using a wish structure? Wish plus simple past tense. It's there. I wish he didn't work so much. If he didn't work so much, he would be with me right now. Right? Very simple. Now, second conditionals. But before we move on to second conditional, okay, there is something more about wish. Here, it talks about change in the situation. See? Change in the situation. We talk about change in the situation. But sometimes, my wish is something like I could do something myself. Like, I'm feeling very bad at the moment because there is nobody here. So uh, I, can, I can make a wish like this. I wish I could call my friends. See, I wish I could. If I use I wish I could, I'm making a wish like I, sh uh, I should do something. When I want to do something on my w uh, own and that is my wish, I use I could. But I can also wish somebody else do something for me. I don't want to do it okay, for myself, but I want somebody else to do something for me. Now, for that, I would use like, see, somebody else means my friend, okay, my friend. It can be a particular friend. If you want to name, you can do it. But with that, we do not use could. I would prefer to use would. So, I can say like, I wish my friend Praveen okay, and Samir would give me a good company this weekend because I am feeling very lonely. Move to the second conditionals. Okay, a few things. See here, how does it change its meaning? If I lived near the mountains, I would go hiking every weekend. But this is if, okay, my boyfriend didn't work so much, we would go out more often. More examples of second conditionals that I'm reflecting on the screen. Okay, if I had a lot of money, I would buy a big house. Condition and result. The condition is the if part. Result, okay, or the effect is the main clause. If I knew his number, I would phone him. Okay, would is shown with the contraction structures. You can use that if you prefer. If clause, past simple. Again, focus. If you're using second conditional with if, past tense. And main clause conditionals, you have would or might or could plus infinitive. What is infinitive? In my previous classes also, I have taught you infinitive, okay, in English is simply verb one without a finite subject. All right? Now, we use would when the result is more definite or certain. If Peter asks Curran out, she would say yes. With that, it means like, okay, uh, this is definitely going to happen. You have this expectation. We use might when the result may or may not happen. So that is a uh, difference. Would, you expect it to happen. Might, you expect it may not happen. All right, boys and girls from grade 10. Uh, time's out. Okay, uh, I, I think we tried a lot in emphasizing okay, our concept of using conditionals, not just the structure like we have learned in classes, but here we try to actually understand their uses. I hope you will practice and you will continue practicing. That's the only way we can keep on flourishing and marching ahead. I had a good time with you people, I hope. Okay, in my next class, we can resume the remaining part of this and then introduce to you some new interesting topics with our English course. Thank you for staying with me for this half an hour. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.